Hi, this is part two of the Singleton Design Pattern video. If you haven't checked out the part one, please click on this link because this is a continuation of that discussion. Um, so in that part one, what we saw was that it was very hard to get Singleton right. And reflection, serialization, cloning, multi-threaded access, multiple class loaders, all of them can really uh, you know, give an opportunity to create new instance and violate the basic Singleton contract of having one and only one instance. So in today's video, we are going to see uh, what can we do to address these issues and how far we can fix these. So let's first look at reflection. So let's go to the code and see uh, what we had done previously. So we had a singleton definition, which is the usual uh, you know, private constructor and public static singleton get instance. And then we had a test case that would create two instances using the get instance call. And then we would create an instance using reflection here and print that instance. So as we saw, hash code would be same when the objects are having same reference and the hash code would be different when it's a different instance. So let's run, quickly run this example and observe the output. So here we have S1 and S2 getting created properly with the get instance call. We have the same hash code, we are good. Then we create using reflection and we got a new hash code indicating we have created yet another instance and violated the singleton principle. So now um, let's see what we can do to fix this. So what we are going to do is going to focus on what is happening here. So why reflection actually work? Because we could set the constructor as accessible and then invoke it. So that means the fix would probably go into the constructor. So in the constructor, what we are going to do is we are going to check if the sole instance is already created by a get instance or any other call like that, we wouldn't allow the reflection API to go further. Instead, we will check the sole instance and if it is not null, We'll throw an error back to the uh, caller saying you cannot create like this. You should use get instance. So let's see what we are going to do. So in our private constructor, first we check if our sole instance is not equal to null. That means the instance is initialized. We are going to throw a new runtime exception to the caller saying cannot create. Please use get instance. <clears throat> That's all. And if it is not null, we proceed with creation. So that is the um, change that we are going to introduce to address this scenario where you know we are first doing get instance and then calling the reflection. So le let's execute this example with that code change and observe the output. So as expected. The output is a little jumbled, but you know, as expected, S1 and S2 got created properly, and both are sharing same reference, so same hash code. But when we went to create the S3 using reflection, we got a runtime exception that said cannot create, please use get instance. So and that exception originates from line number 43, which is new instance call. So we have successfully prevented reflection from uh, messing up our singleton implementation. So um, as you saw, this was very easy, but at the same time, this is a very tricky one, okay? So what if I cut this block out here and move it up here? What will happen to the behavior? Just think about it and try to explore it on uh, your own. And uh, if you want to, we can discuss it and we can discuss it in the comment section to this video. So let me actually proceed to the next uh, <clears throat> uh, steps by which we were able to violate singleton, which was um, serialization and deserialization. So let me grab that code from my local code history here. And that's somewhere. Serialization and deserialization, probably this. Yes, so I'm going to grab this version of the code. All right, we're good. So we have the, um, so here again, let me clear the output window and, and let's take a look at the class. So how do we really address the problem with serialization in terms of singleton? So for that, we have to implement the read resolve method in your uh, singleton class. So what does, re what does the read resolve method uh, provide? So when deserialization happens, 
It is guaranteed that Java would call the read resolve method that you provide just after really deserializing the object. That means it happens on top of deserialization. So after deserialization, you can change the behavior slightly using the read resolve implementation. So the syntax or the uh, sig method signature is private object read resolve throws <coughs> object stream exception. So here, let's just print for our information. Read resolve. And then from here, we are going to kind of change the behavior of deserialization and return the sole instance to the call. So doing that would override the deserialization and give us the sole instance back. And in that case, we are going to have the same hash code for S1, S2, and S3 even after deserialization. So let's run this example now and see the output. As you can see, we could successfully create S1 and S2 using get, a, get instance, and we got the same hash code. Then we did serialization, deserialization, and then also we got the same hash code. And thus we have addressed uh, the uh, new instance creation that was uh, happening when we were using serialization and deserialization in uh, uh, singleton implementation. So <clears throat> that, uh, that's about uh, serialization and deserialization. The next uh, threat that the singleton had was clonable. So uh, when, we had, when we were letting the singleton to be cloned using the default cloning mechanism, we were able to create a duplicate uh, instance, a new instance. So to prevent that, the easiest way is to throw an exception from the clone method and not allow cloning at all. Clone not supported exception you can throw that. So that means uh, you are not ready to clone the singleton. That is a good approach actually because theoretically a singleton is a one and only one instance and nobody should be able to make a copy of it, right? So it's a good idea to throw a clone not supported exception from your clone API or just like we, what we saw in case of uh, serialization and deserialization, you can return this whole instance from clone and address that in that way also. But I would still prefer uh, the throwing exception thing because personal choice. All right. So that addresses cloning. Now, another thread that Singleton had was from multi threaded. So, in our example of multi threaded the Singleton access, we saw that uh, multi threads were able to run and create two instances of Singleton when we were creating two threads and testing our uh, multi threaded scenario. So let me try to get that code back from my history. I think it's this. Yes. So let me get that code back from the history. And as you can see, this is the simple singleton. I just had clonable here, so you can ignore it, no big deal. So we had the executor service. We were submitting two threads, and those two threads were creating two singletons. So just for fun, let's go ahead and create, run this and see what happens. So as you see this output, we got the same hash code. We were good in this case. Let's rerun. See here again, singleton got violated in the second run. So yes, we are still able to um, run that test case and show that singleton is getting violated when access from multiple threads. So the quick fix in this case would be to make the get instance call a synchronized call. So the moment you add synchronized keyword to the get instance, you made sure that multiple threads when calling get instance will be serialized. It won't be parallel. So first thread, the moment it enters get instance, any other thread that is trying to call get instance will have to wait. And until first, in, first thread is not done, which is basically initializing our sole instance and comes out, then the second thread can go in. And then when the second thread enters, it will see that sole instance is already initialized and it's going to return it to the caller. So let's rerun our test case with synchronized keyword added to our uh, lazy initializer. So we see that, yeah, we are getting the same hash code. So let's just rerun for a couple of more times to make sure it's working fine with multiple threads. Yes, we got the same hash code. Again, same hash code. And we are running again and we got the same hash code one more time same hash code 
So we, by putting synchronized keyword to the get instance or making the get instance synchronized, we have addressed uh, the thread from multiple threads. So again, multiple thread uh, can cause a trouble only when you are lazily creating a singleton. If you were to eagerly, eagerly create it here by saying new singleton, this was never a concern because uh, in that case, it will be created during class loading phase and there is no problem of multi-threading at that time, right? But this is not a good approach most of the time because, you know, suppose, so here we have one and only one chance to create the object really. So what happens, what if somehow the new singleton instance creation failed at this point? Then we cannot, we can never recreate our singleton. We will never be able to use it in that application, right? So um, get instance, you can call as many times as you want. And suppose one of the creation fail, you'll still be able to recreate the instance if you want. So that is one of the benefits of uh, using lazy loading. Plus, um, you know, if it is a very expensive operation to create the singleton instance, you might want to delay it until it's really needed on demand, right? So this is one way to uh, make, um, a singleton which is basically created um, thread safe but at the same time this is not a very good approach is it because we are making this only single point of access to the um, singleton a synchronized call so that means even after creation all the threads all the calls to the singleton get instance is going to be synchronized so in some environments that may be a major concern or uh, in terms of performance so uh, what we can do is we can narrow down the scope of synchronized execution so for that what we are going to do is going to use a synchronized block so theoretically looking at this if sole instance is null then only we want to really lock right so we are going to put the synchronized up here and say singleton dot class we're going to get a lock on the singleton dot class and then try to create the sole instance so this is we have we have you know narrowed down the scope of synchronization only when the sole instance is null. If sole instance is not null, we are going to return the properly initialized instance anyway, and synchronization never happens. So one more thing that we should notice here is that suppose thread A enters here in get instance, and it sees that sole instance is equal to null, and then it tries to get a lock on the singleton class. By the time it gets the lock, it is possible that some other thread might have already initialized your sole instance. So it's always very good approach to check. Even after getting the lock, we need to see if has some other thread already initialized the sole instance, right? So even after getting the lock, we are going to see, okay, by the time I got the lock, did anyone else initialize it? So we are going to check one more null check here. If it's still null, we are going to <coughs> create a new instance and assign it back to the um, static variable. So this approach is called double check locking. So it's like we are checking once and we are checking again. So this a checking approach is called double check locking idiom and this was one of the most proposed fix for uh, multi threaded access of singleton instances so let's just for fun run this <coughs> multi threaded uh, example with uh, double check locking so let's just quickly run So it seems to be working, but actually um, double check locking can be broken, okay, in theory, because you know, most of the test cases that I've run in the past, I've seen that it works, but in theory, double check locking is broken. Why is it broken? It is because Java compiler specification allows the application to publish, uh, the runtime to publish half initialized variables uh, for the, to be available to the other threads. So let's see what happens. So let's assume that thread one is entering this get instance, as well as thread two is uh, entering this get instance call. Suppose thread one checks if 
sole instance equal to none <coughs> yes it sees that sole instance is none then thread one goes ahead and grabs the lock and then again it checks if sole instance is still null yes it's still null so thread one goes ahead and tries to create the singleton object so at this time the way our final execution <coughs> code is generated it is possible that the sole instance variable may be assigned to a half initialized singleton object and that change will be published out there to be seen by other threads so let's assume thread 2 comes here at that time and checks if sole instance is null so at this check it will see that okay there is something in the sole instance but for thread b there thread 2 there is no way to know that it's a half initialized object right so it will see that there is something in the sole instance and it will quickly returns that instance back to the caller so what happens the caller of thread 2 gets a half initialized sole instance and then from then on we are not sure how the behavior is going to be there may be bugs there may be exceptions thrown from the that thread right so that is the problem with double check locking so to address this what happened is um, as of java 1.5 the volatile uh, keyword was kind of you know addressed using volatile keyword as of 1.5 volatile keyword was right from the beginning but as of java 1.5 uh, they uh, kind of improved, so to speak, the volatile keyword to make sure that a change to a variable, <clears throat> a volatile variable, will be published only when the change is complete. That means only when the suppose two threads in the in the in the case thread one and thread two enters get instance, and thread one goes up here and tries to create the object, and thread two comes and checks for null the thread 2 will still see the null it won't see the half baked object and return it so that's how volatile keyword and java memory model happens before uh, addresses that so basically that happens before rule in java memory model is that that um, a change a write to a, a volatile variable happens before read so that means thread 1 when it's writing uh, thread 2 will not see the half baked object okay so that is the um, double check locking and how it was broken and how it is fixed. This is a very uh, important topic that a lot of people ask in interviews. So you might want to revisit this topic. Okay. So that is uh, another way to fix singleton multi-threaded example. So let's rerun the multi-threaded example and see it's all working fine. So that is about double check locking. So there is yet another way to address uh, multiple thread access of singleton. That is by using a holder idiom. So how we do that is by creating a holder class. That is going to be a static class. Static holder. <clears throat> static class, sorry. Static class holder. And in static class, we are going to have a final static final singleton instance equals new singleton so this is all the holder holds okay it holds a new instance of singleton and whenever and get instance is called we are just going to say return holder dot instance so that is the um, holder pattern static holder pattern so how this works is like this so this is again lazy initialization okay so until get instance is called this new singleton will never be initialized so the moment get instance is called we are saying holder dot instance at that time holder class is loaded and its initializer is run and this static variable is initialized and thus we return the initialized singleton back to the caller and all the subsequent get instance Will returns the same instance we call so just for fun let's rerun this test again and make sure everything looks fine in terms of hash code and creation see created only once and we got two ha same hash codes so that means we are good with the holder pattern so this is called <coughs> the singleton hold singleton holder okay so that is an yet another way to um, work around 
threats posed by multiple threats. So now let's go back and inspect yet another way <clears throat> of creating singleton. So as of Java 5, we have enum keywords. And you know, enum keywords are like, uh, you know, literals that was int introduced as part of uh, Java 5. <clears throat> so um, in his book, Josh Block, uh, the book called Effective Java, one of the best books I've ever read. In his book, what uh, Josh Block has suggested is to use enum to represent singleton. And that's a very good suggestion because if you use enum, you have thread safety, you have uh, safety against serialization, deserialization, you have safety against cloning, and uh, you know all these threats that we saw so far, even reflection. So how do we create a <clears throat> singleton using enum? <clears throat> so that for that, let's delete a class singleton and create enum singleton. And then we are going to have one instance. That is the only thing that inside your ENA. And and suppose we have some APIs, public string get configuration, and it returns some configuration string. Okay, so let's change our view singleton, which is throwing an error here because we removed our class. So singleton singleton equal to singleton dot instance. And we are all good. So we are good. So <clears throat> this is the most easiest and probably the robust way or stylish way to create a singleton in uh, as of Java 5. But at the same time, um, we are kind of misusing the intent of enums. So, um, according to me, this might surprise some some uh, some person who comes to, and takes a look at the, uh, look at the code after us if he doesn't know that enum can be used as singleton, because we are kind of uh, programming against the intent, right? So, uh, this is kind of debatable, but at the same time, it has all the benefits, as I said. So, nothing wrong in using enums to create a singleton. So, <clears throat> so we saw that uh, enum can be used to create singleton, and that addresses all the concerns, including cloning, serialization, deserialization, reflection, and multiple threaded access. So, the next um, way by which uh, reflection was getting broken was through um, multiple class loaders. So, multiple class loaders, as I said would load two different um, instances of the uh, singleton class in their own class loading environment under one single JVM. And that is very hard to prevent. And for that, what you would, could do is that uh, if you search in the internet, there are some examples where you can put some code into your singleton constructor to check certain things in the class loader and things like that. But again, those are not completely error-free and that may not work uh, in certain cases and so uh, I, I don't know exactly if there is a solution for this scenario where multiple class loaders can violate your singleton so we can actually discuss that also if you find something interesting going back to um, um, yet another interesting point we want we if what if we use um, a class with static methods and static variables instead of singleton Actually, um, it is a good uh, good thought. Suppose we all we are interested about is a bunch of utility methods, right? In that case, you don't really have to go through all this pain and create a singleton. All you can do is you can define a class and make all that utility method static and still use it. So there is nothing wrong in that approach. So let's quickly um, see that. So, as I said, you can, uh, anywhere you are using a singleton, you could use a class with static method also. Uh, so, that act actually serves your purpose. So, but at the same time, singleton has its own benefits. So, Gang of Four has said something more about singleton, which most of the textbooks or the websites don't uh, talk about. They say that the sole instance uh, should be extensible by subclassing. 
and the uh, clients should be able to use the the instance interchangeably without changing their code so <clears throat> let's see how uh, how that can be done right so here i'm going to try to contrast between uh, a class with static methods and a singleton instance how they differ and what are the benefits of having a singleton so um, let me go here and try to type up something Okay, fine. So I'm gonna add it like a big comment. Okay, so let's assume we have an interface called screen. And suppose it has a, a, a virtual method that needs to be implemented called uh, set pixel. Uh, say x, y, and some uh, color. So basically the idea is we are going to provide a screen interface which we can turn the pixels on and off with some color on that screen and now let's th think about its implementations lcd screen which implements the set pixel and crt screen now um So, okay, here are the implementations. Now let's think of an application that uh, uses, uh, that has some graphic routines that will draw a circle on the screen, right? So we have an API called, in an app, we have an API draw circle on a screen. And suppose we uh, have some you know implementation here where we are uh, you know computing all the points compute all the points for each point we are going to do screen dot set pixel x y and color so that is how we are going to use our screen so suppose we are dealing with an application where we have one and only one lcd screen so how do how would it look so here is a scenario where we have we have one and only one lcd screen so here we are going to say uh, LC, uh, screen s equal to lcd screen dot get instance so we have made lcd screen a single term and we got the get instance now we call draw circle with that screen so polymorphically we are sending an lcd screen instance and this will draw a circle on an lcd screen so similarly we can suppose our crt screen was also one and only one screen in the whole app application and we could uh, create a crt screen get instance which is again screen and pass it to draw circle And that will draw the circle on a CRT screen. So here, see, we have interchanged the singleton instance by extension, and the client, which was draw circle, did not have to change. So we here we see some flexibility over using a, a static class. So let's us, now let's assume assume that LCD screen was a class with static method uh, set pixel x y right so with this assumption let's see what would happen to our draw circle implementation so now if that was the case our draw circle implementation would have looked like this draw circle would would cannot take an argument of screen there's no point instead it will compute all points and for each point it'll say lcd screen dot set pixel statically calling the api x y and getting it drawn but what will happen the moment you decide to use a crt screen you will have to re-implement this draw circle uh, and then use a crt screen and then probably you will say crt and violate a lot of things like you know uh, don't repeat yourself principally you have violated and there is code duplication here 
and then there is very tight coupling coupling between lcd screen this method crd screen and this method and this component right so using a static uh, you know a class with static uh, apis have a disadvantage like this where you are introducing direct coupling between that class and your uh, uh, you know object or class that is using it but at the same time singleton still you you know lets you use polymorphism and uh, interface implementations to um, to add some sort of flexibility so that is the uh, that is the scenario where you would really use a singleton over a class with static apis hope that is clear so now let's go back and uh, uh, see final point which is basically the consequ consequences of a uh, singleton design pattern so the singleton design pattern has following consequences it provides uh, controlled access that means the sole instance is out there as a private field static field and the, uh, and the constructor is also private so nobody else can really manipulate that instance and the access to it is really uh, you know uh, given through the uh, global access point so it's very well controlled also you can uh, change your logic at some point of time to have more than one instance and limit the number of instances to n right so another thing is reduced namespace so let's assume that you have uh, a huge number of configurations and each of them were uh, like uh, global variables so that means you would have global variables thrown out across your applications and the namespace is kind of polluted in that case uh, singleton kind of uh, encapsulates so to speak all the configurations into a single objects and that can be passed around and whatever you need you can take it out from the singleton and flexibility as we saw um, you know we can subclass an interface and create singleton instances and pass it to methods and avoid tight coupling uh, for from classes that provides static methods so these are the consequences or rather uh, benefits of uh, singleton um, design pattern but at the same time what i have to say is that uh, you know as we saw it's kind of hard to get the singleton right and it makes us implement a lot of things like uh, double check locking or holders or uh, you know over you know then uh, the addressing the reflection addressing deserialization addressing cloning so that kind of is adding a lot of responsibility to one class and it's kind of violating some basic object oriented design principle like uh, single responsibility principle and uh, for example single, single responsibility principle says uh, a class should have only one single reason to change in terms of functionality right so um, when you add too many functionalities like that it's kind of a violation of uh, single responsibility principle but again that's just a principle not a rule so we are good and uh, so judiciously you can use uh, singleton design pattern and um, there are certain issues associated with it uh, that pretty much concludes the singleton design pattern thank you